So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the net change theorem with one of the most common uh, applications of the net change theorem, and that's displacement versus distance. Okay, and both of these are uh, they're very tightly connected, all right? But they have some slightly different uh, interpretations. So distance is how far an object moves from the origin or its initial position. Okay, so that's it's the it's basically that idea of the distance from the origin. Okay. Displacement, on the other hand, is how far an object has moved in total. So basically, when we think about displacement, we might move forward, back, forward, and that total amount of that uh, um, area that's covered is going to be called the displacement. Okay, right? So the distance is just, you know, it's it's that I have a beginning point, I have an ending point. How far is it from the beginning to the ending point? Okay, and displacement is how far has the object traveled. The integral can help us find both the displacement or the distance if we are asked to, but how we get there is going to be different. So in both cases, v of t, the velocity, is going to be the rate of change. But how we interpret the accumulation of the rate of change is going to be different. So let's take an example. Let's say let v of t equal 3t minus 3. So what is the displacement from 0 to 3? So I'm going to draw a picture of this. So this is what this is going to look like. Okay, And we're going to go from 0 to 3. So we're going to have this distance, this area in here, and this area in here, okay? From a displacement standpoint, both of these things are going to be positive, okay? So even this area that's below the x-axis, normally when we think about integrals, we think of that as being negative, but for the purposes of displacement, it's actually going to end up being positive, okay? So what we're going to want to do is we're going to think about this as an integral, okay? So our displacement here is first... It's going to have the integral from 0 to 1, because that's the negative part, but we're going to make it negative. So that way, the amount of distance covered is going to be actually positive. And it'll be the distance times the time, or excuse me, the velocity times the time. So that'll be 3t minus 3 dt. Plus, and then on the positive end, so this area over here, that set is going to be positive. So we're going to make that plus, and that's going to be from 1 to 3 of 3t minus 3 dt. So what we've done in the case of displacement is we've gone in and we've said, okay, the negative part, we're going to have to make it positive because we want to know the, just the amount of space that's covered, right, by the by this particle as it moves, all right, and then the positive part just stays positive. And so that's our displacement, okay? So the negative end becomes a negative so that we can add it to the total amount of uh, space covered. Now, in the case of distance, on the other hand, distance, all right, we're going to treat the negative part. So let's use a different color. We'll use blue or red. We're going to treat the negative part as continuing to be negative, and the positive part is now going to be positive, okay? So we don't actually have to break up the integral along the lines of the negative and the positive. We can actually just find the integral overall. So distance is just that integral from 0 to 3 of 3t three minus 3 dt. Okay? So in the case of our displacement, this is going to be end up being negative, and this will be 3t squared over 2 minus 3t plus, and that will be um, from 0 to 1, plus uh, 3t squared over 2 minus 3t, evaluated from 1 to 3, okay? And the distance, then, is just going to be um, 3t squared over 2 minus 3t, evaluated from 0 to 3. So, so what we'll get here, then, this one here is going to become negative, and it'll be um, 3 halves, right, minus 3, okay, minus, and then 0, so that's when we evaluated 1, minus 0, minus 0, plus, okay, now the second part here is going to be um, 3 times 3 squared, so that's 27 over 2, minus 9, minus, and this will be 3 halves, again, minus 3. And what we end up with is we get negative of negative 1.5. So you can see that that negative area has now become a positive. 
plus uh, 6. And so this ends up equaling 7.5. Okay. Now when we use the other formula, okay, when we use this distance formula where we just use the, the single integral, what we get now is we're going to get 3 times 3 squared over 2 minus 3 times 3 minus 0 minus 0. And that's going to end up equaling um, 4.5. And so what you see here is that this 1.5, it's been subtracted from the distance, okay, but then it gets added to that displacement. Because basically what we've done inside of this particular situation, if we were to imagine it in movement, in terms of movement, is we started out at the origin, okay, we moved backwards 1.5, okay, and then we moved forwards, okay, we moved forwards. 7.5, or we move forward 6, right, which is this amount right here, move forward 6. So when we look at the displacement, the displacement ends up being um, 7.5, right? Actually, we go over 1.5, then we starting here, we go 6, okay? But from a distance perspective, what's happening is this is all the distance that we went. We just went this distance right here, and so we only went 4.5. So the displacement is different by the factor of the negative, negative piece. So when we're looking at the difference between distance and displacement, one is to understand the difference in their definition. Displacement is how far an object actually is going to travel. Okay, so it'll travel, um, you know, away from the origin. It might go uh, in the positive direction, the negative direction. Okay, and the whole idea is how far did it travel in total? When it comes to distance, what we're asking is, how far away is the object from the origin now? And in the case of distance, it's very possible to have a positive displacement, like it actually moved, and then have the distance actually be zero or negative, right? Because what we're really talking about is we're talking about two very different ideas. Now, when it comes to how do we find them, well, basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to figure out when is the the graph going into the negative. When does that velocity go into the negative? And when it goes into the negative, we're going to have to separate our bounds, right, with the negative part being now negative, okay, and the positive part being uh, now positive, right? So we've got to separate out our integrals and use more than one integral, okay? And that's how we utilize displacement. On the other hand, with distance, we can just use the straight-up integral. The integral actually represents the distance from the origin that the object is traveling. So this finishes the mini lecture on displacement and distance.